Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and I'm here with my big brother, Pastor Morgan. Hey, guys. Woo! Today, we have an in-studio guest with us today, and his name is Joshua Lewis from mm -hmm. The Remnant Radio. Thanks mm -hmm. for having me. Yes, there thank you is. for being here, coming all the way down to Tucson, Arizona. Mm -hmm. How do you like Tucson? It's awesome. I mean, they're known worldwide because of this podcast. You guys have <laughs> wow. put them on the map. We have. <laughs> wow. wow. That's crazy. That's yeah. a compliment. It's totally, totally from worth you. the drive. What so. about the mountains? Uh, great. Yeah. I hear that like normally they're kind of bland, but because of Very the cool. amount of rain you guys have had, they're quite, mm -hmm. quite pretty. Green. Quite tropical. Last year they were on fire. They were orange. <laughs> <laughs> they were on fire. Yo, you, you had like Mount Zion and like <laughs> yeah. flames and stuff. That's cool. Pretty yeah. Much. Yeah. But um, so... You did our 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. service, yeah. and it was a blessing because you talked about how, first of all, we were, some, my dad was saying, he's like, we used to call ourselves like, oh, charismatic with a seatbelt, mm -hmm. and so we were, we just want to talk about that today, why we can't, not that we can't say that, I mean, you say that, but why that is not godly, why we should be pursuing the gifts, earnestly desiring the gifts. So sure. we'll talk about that a little bit. We'll ask you some fun questions too mm -hmm. about your white hair and other things. So that's good. Let's start with that. So right. what? Let's start with that. Why? <laughs> Why are you that. prematurely gray? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's start with that You're question. You're 30, Joshua. Yeah. I refuse to dress for men. That's why I prematurely gray. That's yeah. why. I adopted a 14-year-old when I was 21. Yeah. Um, yeah. All of those things. Of those I don't things. know what else to say. You uh, look cool. Yeah. Yeah. Look cool. Genetics. But, I like it. Well, people think you dyed because it looks nice. That's mm -hmm. why. Well, if I wasn't so like that's upsetting to me. When people <laughs> think that I dye my hair, I'm like, I don't know how else to say it. Like yeah. I could care so little about yeah. appearance that like I don't want to be the guy yeah. who looks like the guy <laughs> who cares so he much does. about his appearance yeah. he's dying his it's hair. Okay. Yeah. That's wacky. It's only the first five minutes that changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and I think what really spoke to me, because I took some notes. I don't know if you... Did you take notes today in church? I took some Good notes. Good job. How, how Christian were you today in church? Good job. <laughs> well, he took it on a notepad. I took it on my phone, so he beat oh. me. But um, when points. you talked about how, like, with legalism, how we can have... That's what I think Morgan and I have struggled with, like, mm. trying to consecrate ourselves to be, like, holy. And then if we have no sin or anything in our life, then God can use us, mm -hmm. you know? And then how you talked about how then that can build your ego. Mm -hmm. And so I was just crying today in service and just realizing how that's what I've been doing. Like I mm. have just been building my ego and I thought it was all for like, oh, I'm just being pure and like being good so that God can use me. But I was realizing it was putting a lot of pride in me thinking like I could do something. And so sure, the cameras are down. Oh, they're back. So mm. anyway, can you tell us? A little bit more about that. Sure. I mean, that's a pretty normal uh, posture for most Christians. And actually, we go through yeah. ebbs and flows of that. You think about a pastor who gets in the pulpit and starts, you know, preaching. And, you know, they start off with a real good, humble heart. Mm -hmm. And they're they're great. But then they start getting good at what they're doing. And then they kind of get puffed up a little bit. And then it's kind of like this Christian practice of ours to, like, mm -hmm. constantly live in repentance. Where yeah. we're pursuing things rightly. And then we realize that, man, our motives are out of step and we've got to repent. And we've got to change the way that we're doing things. So mm -hmm. uh, I think where I realized um, this about about the gifts in particular uh, wasn't like some big rebuke. Um, I was watching these guys fall, these charismatic mm -hmm. leaders mm -hmm. fall into sin. And it turns mm -hmm. out they'd been in sin for a long time. Yeah. But, man, the craziest thing is like I had friends who'd go out to those conferences and get healed mm -hmm. or they get prophetic word and it was spot on. Yeah. And I was like, well. I mean, God seems to be using some pretty broken people, you know? Mm -hmm. and then I go back to the Old Testament and I look at the guys who anointed, the guys who are like prophesying, like David's like slaying guys left, right, and center, mm -hmm. you know? Like mm -hmm. Saul is like trying to murder David and then prophesies. And mm -hmm. it's like, okay, so yeah, having a sinless life isn't a prerequisite for being used in, mm -hmm. in by the Spirit of God, right? Yeah. So that being said, I don't want to, I, want to, I don't want to be this big theological word, antinomian, mm -hmm. which means that, I don't believe that there is sin that we can yeah. live however we want. No, 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 not not that at all, mm -hmm. man. If you're if you're in a lifestyle in a space where you're like, I want to live holy and I want to be mm -hmm. consecrated and I want to be yes and amen, mm -hmm. praise God. Yeah. Uh, what well, where we get into trouble is it's like God loves me because I do this, yeah. or God's mm -hmm. going to bless me because I no, I'm I'm doing this because God is worthy of the worship amen. and this is my lifestyle and I'm doing this because I love Him, mm -hmm. not not I'm trying to get something out of it, yeah. you know. So. Uh, I think we could talk about the gifts 
But we can talk about that with literally every area of Christian practice, right? Mm -hmm. We do this everywhere. It touches all of us. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's true because I, I was just realizing too, like when I even have given a word or anything, I so many times put like pressure on myself like well should i even be saying anything because mm -hmm. like i wasn't like the best this week with like reading the bible and praying and spending <laughs> time with the lord do yep. i can i really say anything and i also want to talk about maybe even practical ways or things to step out because i mean we're gonna talk about that a little bit tonight too in our 6 p.m service but i think like for me i sometimes get overwhelmed because i feel like the lord is speaking to me but then i don't know how to present that or to say that like you were saying oh i believe from the lord like hey i'm not a prophet sure, sure i'm not sure, saying sure. i am i'm not saying this is even from the lord i'm right. just have this feeling or really so like today i said some things but i didn't really say that and then i felt so much like i was like oh man i should have said that like that i'm not a prophet like i'm not trying to say because mm. i've gone to the other extreme of being like, well, I'm a woman because people have been told me like you need to wear a head covering you can't right. even speak at all mariah and so yeah, I was really shocked when they let you speak on the microphone in the church. I was like, man, aren't the women supposed to stay silent? And <laughs> I leaned over and I was like, I asked, glasses. I asked your dad, I was like, where's your head covering? I'm <laughs> so confused. <laughs> my long hair. Oh, right, right, right. right. Oh, Joshua. oh, you're one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sometimes like practical things, I guess you give up because I not even, but even biblically, right? The, because I just sometimes I felt that I felt like if I am not as holy as I can be. Sure. I can't say anything. Even though, like you're saying, Jesus, he had compassion and pity for the people and that's when he moved. So obviously I should keep my mouth shut if I'm just doing it because like, oh look, someone will see or if I give a word then they'll say, Wow, Mariah, right. that was amazing and then I'll get the glory and then I shouldn't say anything. But when I want to give a word because I'm like, I really have a heart for your people, God, and I just want to be able to have you flow through me to minister to them, mm -hmm. that changes it. But sh we'll even answer that. Should women even, that would answer because a lot of <laughs> even Calvaries, they don't think women should say I'll anything. Say. Yeah. Sure. No, so I mean, the scriptures are clear. I mean, the, the scriptures speak of prophecy and they tell women how to prophesy and how to go about mm -hmm. that practice. Um, so in, in 1 Corinthians... Um, uh, was it is chapter is it 11 maybe it's 12 um i know i know in 12 it talks about the gifts in 13 it's a love chapter in 14 there's like some some policing mm -hmm. of that um so but there is there is explicit instructions on on when women prophesy mm -hmm. and talks about their head covering and speak, yeah. showing that they're under authority and, and submitted and that kind of thing so mm -hmm. there is explicit instructions on how women to, should prophesy Amen. so yeah obviously i mean even joel chapter 2 says he's poured out the spirit of prophecy on his mm -hmm. sons and daughters it'd be so yeah. weird for a bunch of women to have the gift of prophecy the, the daughters of agabus to have a gift of prophecy in acts 21 and not be allowed to use it in the mm -hmm. local assembly that would be quite odd um so so yes i believe women can prophesy now there there does come to be a, a tricky question on should women be a part of the judging of prophecy mm. um there's different debates on this mm -hmm. um you i you really just kind of want to like side with your church and figure out where your church is at on some of this stuff because mm -hmm. it says that when it talks about women remaining silent, yeah. some people think that's in context of judging the prophetic word, um, that when one prophesies, others are to weigh what is being said, uh, and that those who weigh are to be elders, or some say it's the local congregation. I mean, if it's elders, then they go, women shouldn't do that. So there's a bit of a debate. If I'm going to be entirely honest, I'm undecided on it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think if there's a person who has exhibited faithfulness in prophecy, I'm going to ask them, Does that, did that make sense to you, whether male or female? In the same way that like, at my church, there's a lady teacher named Jen Wilkin. Mm -hmm. I would have yeah. no hesitation or reservation for preaching a sermon that she sat in and be like, hey, did I totally bomb that? Mm -hmm. Like, was that theologically accurate? And get her insight. Mm -hmm. I would have no problem doing that because, again, she's not exerting authority. Yeah. I'm asking for her input. So mm -hmm. it's it's not, heck, I mean, even if I didn't ask for input, I'd take mm -hmm. it. Like, if she came up to me and said, hey, you really screwed up. Like, I'd be <laughs> like, you're probably right. You know what I mean? I, yeah. uh, I'm I'm complimentarian, but I'm not, I'm not wacky about it, mm -hmm. I don't think. Yeah. Um, I don't, did that answer your question yeah, at all? No, okay. it definitely did. Yeah, because I, I th like when you were talking about too, submission, like that's yeah. what we need to be doing is sure. submitting to um, the authority, obviously, of God, but also 
who God has put in authority over you, like pastors and elders. And so for me as a woman, how I look at it is like I have my covering, which isn't, I actually used to wear a head covering, which was crazy because someone got me into that. But I was realizing I was doing it for people. (laughs) But I, but sometimes when I'm praying, like I will like just to be able to remind myself of Mm -hmm. my position, I will put my hand on my head just to like, it's a reminder for me of not to get all uppity and think like, Oh, look, I gave this word like Morgan. Are you giving any words like you can see the pride, especially in women wanting to rise up. And Mm. so I I think it's good to understand how beautiful submission is, Mm. um, obviously for women. And but women hate that word more than anyone, but also for men. Right. If a man just went up and like you're saying, if he just started saying like Trump's still going to be president and it was causing disorder and you shouldn't have said that, then he would need to be able to be. So I guess my question is what would a rebuke look like in the church or not rebuke, but just kind of correction because that's where our church I think is sometimes afraid because we're like, which we're saying we don't want to be, we want to earnestly desire, but there still has to be ways of people feeling safe because there are, guidelines there are going to be the leaders and pastors and elders who are going to um i guess it's discipline but people to be able to accept discipline or just be able to be teachable so um you've said some stuff to us but what would be like ways of going about that like just say i came up and started like cracking out in tongues with no interpretation Mm -hmm. like what would you do yeah okay so i want want to back up i'm going to totally answer the question i want to back up just a little bit though and talk about you know um the human heart is susceptible to sin mm-hmm. and I don't necessarily think that any particular gender is is going to be prone to another sin more than others. Right. Um, I think mm-hmm. uh, men can walk out of their rightful position as leaders, um, as, as those who are to protect and to be, and to defend and they can, they can be apathetic and they can, they can pass over their leadership um, and, and just defer it to others who, instead of taking responsibility for themselves, mm-hmm. protecting others, keeping people safe, uh, being the man of their house, teaching their children and, and, and their family, the gospel, um, that, that kind of involvement is what we're called to. And men mm-hmm. Are, are as equally as sinful as women when it comes to pride, mm-hmm. right? We can we can leave our proper dwelling, if you will, and function in in things that that are good, but that aren't our role, right? Mm-hmm. So so to your to your point, um, absolutely, um, uh, that women can have pride and want to rebel against the status quo and norms, mm-hmm. but men, I think, are as equally. Yeah prone to do such things um mm. but but maybe it expresses in different ways so yeah. so that's that's neither here nor there um but but to back up on the question of how what would a rebuke look like okay now rebuke is like defcon 5 for me right like mm-hmm. because my assumption is when a thing happens in the service you've got three options it's god um it's a devil um and then the most likely of all of these is that it's someone who's worked up in the carnality yeah. you know um maybe they've deluded themselves into believing something's the case or they're just seeking attention mm. right now in all three of those cases we should have some measure of investigation right mm-hmm. so um if it's tongues you know um and i don't know the person mm-hmm. it's easy for me mm-hmm. i go oh you know sir thank you so much for coming i want you to we believe in the gifts but yeah. you know one second hey, let me let me let me finish um uh, i uh I believe in the gifts, but the Bible says that those who labor among us have to be known among us. Mm. And I would love for you to exercise that gift, but I don't know you. Yeah. And just because I'm, I'm trying to care for my, my body, and I'm trying to love them well, we'd ask that you you maybe practice your gift when when you're more involved in the church, mm. when we when we know you and you're known, right? Mm. So that's that's one thing. Yeah. But then but then secondly, um, you know, you could have a situation where they're not. They're not submitting to that. They're not obeying that. They're not working. Maybe they're a member, and there's another option. They're, they've been a member for a while. Mm-hmm. So let's say they're um, uh, they're not, oh, no, man, you're quenching the Spirit, bro. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, see, I just gave you a Bible verse, and that yeah. Bible verse was written by the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. right? And he says, let those who labor among you be known among you. Teaching is a gift. No one would come up to the church and hand me their sermon and say, hey, I'd love to preach today. The Lord sent me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, yeah. he, the, the Lord had you waste a lot of gas money. You ain't getting in that pulpit, bro. It's not happening, yeah. mm-hmm. right? So the same thing happens with all the other gifts. You come mm-hmm. into the church, you know, Sunday morning is a place for the mature expression of the gifts of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. We don't hand a microphone to a random person and say, you lead worship today. Mm-hmm. We, we're, mm-hmm. we're allowing the mature expression of worship to be given, the mature expression of teaching. We grow people into that space because it's mm-hmm. the Lord's day, right? Mm-hmm. We're trying to edify the body. Mm-hmm. So we're not we're not trying to, we're not trying to 
practice and experiment on Sunday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so, so that's that. Now, now let's say they're a member and they're, they're giving a, they're giving a tongue. Right. Yeah. And they know the rule, you know, mm -hmm. here in our house, like there's no tongue without interpretation. Right. Yeah. You can sing in tongues or whatever when we're in a prayer meeting, but like, mm -hmm. you know, on the Lord's day, we either don't do it at all mm -hmm. or you come up and there's a group of people who have been known to have a, an interpretation yeah. and you share that word with them and then we'll kind of share it publicly. Right. Mm -hmm. So there are options like that. And in other churches, they're just, they're run in different ways and they tell their members, Hey, this is how we run. You know, if you give an interpretation, uh, a tongue, and then we just wait for someone to give an interpretation mm -hmm. and then some random person gives an interpretation. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's a huge opportunity for prophet lion personally. Yeah. Like, I just don't think that's yeah. helpful mm -hmm. because it's like, I don't know the person who gave the tongue. I don't know the person who gave the interpretation of the tongue. Frankly, the interpretation of the tongue was like, thus saith God, the Lord is doing a new thing. He's speaking in King James, He's not doing a new thing. That's an old thing. <laughs> and then he didn't do the last thing that he did. Why is he doing a new thing? Yeah. You know? So it's like, it's kind of hard to believe. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just I think that there's probably a more uh, honed way and healthy way of carrying those things out. So even with prophecy, if someone feels like they have a word, if they're not a vetted person, mm -hmm. right? So Sam Storms has got a really cool model yeah. at his church. He has got 40 people that he's been doing life with for like a decade. They're trained. They're theologically robust. They, they hear from the Lord. And he just has a microphone over while he's preaching. And they can step to the side of the stage where the microphone is. And when he's done preaching kind of okay you got a word let's share it and they can just share it right but let's say they're a member of the church and uh they they aren't on that team but they feel like god's saying something they can go approach the elders and yeah. share it with the elders and if it's approved they can share it mm -hmm. right so again you're, you're wanting to make sure that the delivery of these things is done in a healthy way mm -hmm. because again the gift of teaching is a great way to run back when we teach their young young teachers can come to wrong conclusions about texts yeah right? They can just easily jump straight to a moral therapeutic interpretation or something mm -hmm. wacky. And they can come in and we want to screen that before they get in the pulpit. Yeah. That's the responsible thing for a pastor to do. Mm -hmm. We don't want to look, make you look embarrassed because if you got up on that mic and said, you know, God's lonely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, then I get up on the mic and I'm like, he's not <laughs> right. I have to correct your prophecy. It's embarrassing to you. Yeah. Yeah. Like it makes you feel bad. And I want to avoid that. Mm -hmm. And also I don't want like you to lie to the church about something that God's not like God's yeah. not lonely. Yeah. Um, he's self-sufficient. So anyway, mm -hmm. uh, that's a long way of answering a question. There's so many different ways that tongues can pop off in an unorganized way. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and the, there's mm -hmm. ways that I think it can happen in an organized way, but you and your church have to figure out what that looks like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and what if, Another thing is if you kind of miss it, like in a problem, because mm -hmm. usually you can see is if people respond. And I know um, Sam Storms, their church does that too. I think I saw it, but I'm asking you when I say this, mm -hmm. but there are some women and they gave a word and they said, if anyone feels like this applies to them, come over here and we'll pray for you. Mm -hmm. And so like that happened to me today. I like said, well, if anyone wants to come to the altar, like you can come and like get right for the Lord or whatever. I said something like that. But then I like said it first. I didn't really see anyone besides one person who came up. And then I was like, maybe that wasn't from the Lord. And then I was like feeling like, should have I said, like, I'm sorry. Like I mm. should have, I not said that. Like, was that flesh? Um, and then I get like attacked with, I don't want to say anything again. Like, I don't mm -hmm. even know. Like all these things. That's a lot of emotions. I know. Thoughts at the I, same know time. I know. That's. A person Not can't good. think all of those things at one time. Yeah, I, it just comes. But I think it was when you were like sharing and then I was, I think I was being convicted. Sure. I think it was good though. I don't think it was um, anything where it's like, oh, feel bad for my eye. When you were speaking, like obviously the Lord was speaking through you and like hitting me like rhema words, just convicting me. I was just like mm -hmm. crying and realizing how I've been doing everything with wrong motives. Mm. And so yeah. God's really just been changing all of us and like breaking us because yeah, we've been trying yeah, to do everything. In that's what I wanted to ask is what really hit me. And it was really good is when you said open, but cautious. And that's kind of how we've been, you know, it's yeah. because like I was telling you mm -hmm. between services sure. is I've seen I've seen the abuse and I've seen so many people get disillusioned. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, it would be better to be more cautious and not disillusion a lot of people than move. You know, I want I'm open to the gifts and want to move in that. But then I say that, but then I don't really like I don't really pursue it like I should. Mm -hmm. Sure. I guess. And so, yeah. 
I always ask yeah, them, what's but cautious mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? People say, I'm open. Okay, so you believe in the gifts. Yep, I believe in them. They're theological. What's the but cautious? Mm-hmm. Right? Well, well, you know, um, I just don't trust all these prophetic words. It's like, okay, so you're, you're charismatic. What's the but cautious? Mm-hmm. Right? Because typically when they, when they say I'm open, but cautious, what they're, what they're trying to say is I don't like wacky stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh yeah. So yeah. the apostle Paul doesn't like that either. So yeah. it's cool. Why are you putting but cautious on there? Yeah. Like just say that these hyper charismatics are out of bounds. When mm-hmm. people say typically I'm open, but cautious, what they're saying is I have a theological category that I believe in the gifts, but I'm not going to pursue them. And I don't really want them in my church because they mm-hmm. creep me out. Yeah. And like, I have to pastor the Holy yeah. spirit. And it's like, whoa, we oh, don't man. pastor the spirit. Yeah. Like the spirit pastors us, the spirit leads us, mm-hmm. right? The spirit speaks to us. The, the gifts are safe. Yeah. It's it's people's mm-hmm. hearts that are twisted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you've seen these guys like get up there in the pulpit and do an offering. And there's nothing wrong with teaching. There's nothing wrong with giving an offering. Mm-hmm. But if they got a heart of greed, yeah. mm-hmm. that offering is miserable mm-hmm. for everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's that's just rough to sit through. It's like yeah. it's like nails on a chalkboard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So again, it's not bad. It's the motive. It produces something outside of us, and we don't notice mm-hmm. it, right? Like what happens is our heart is in us and we're like, okay, if, let's say, let's say I am, you know, I've got a, I've got a heart of, of lust. Right. Mm-hmm. And this heart of lust causes me to neglect my wife. Mm-hmm. Right. The, the heart actually produces actions. Mm-hmm. It actually does things. It causes you to neglect people, not cherish people like you should. It allows you to entertain thoughts you shouldn't. Like mm-hmm. it, it produces something in you. And I think sometimes when we approach the gifts, we think that the gifts can be neutral in our approach to them. Mm-hmm. And, and that was like, the, I think the main point of the sermon was that your the way you pursue will affect your practice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you're pursuing this in a legalistic way of like, I've got to get all my stuff together so that God will love me mm-hmm. or in a kind of, um, uh, egotistical way. I need all of these gifts so people will think I'm called and chosen and gifted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, or I'm going to be open but cautious and I believe the gifts are real, but I'm not going to pursue them. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. what would it look like for a group of open but cautious people to like every day wake up? And I'm not saying you have to pay, pray three hours a day or anything outrageous. Just wake up and go, you're like, Lord, I really need you today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you speak to me? Like, I, I realize yeah. I'm actually broken and and I'm not sovereign and you're in control. Mm. And like, I think there's people today that you want me to reach and touch. And like, mm. would you help me like yeah. lead me and guide me today? And then believe that God's actually going to speak to you yeah. because he yeah. wants to be on mission with you. Yeah. Like yeah. that's a good thing. Um, and I think that would shift our language quite a mm. bit. Yeah. I think yeah. the, but like, yeah, it's, it's funny. Like we've never even really said that, like that phrase, but that I know that that's kind of what we've been. Um, mm-hmm. I you know we've joked like my dad said charismatic with a seatbelt, sure, mm-hmm. and he's saying but that's still adding the butt in there, yeah, with the seatbelt, you know. Mm-hmm. Apply and, that to any other Christian doctor. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's like we yeah. we Being don't want the weirdness or anything. Yeah, but yeah, like you said, the Holy Spirit isn't weird. Yeah, it's the people, and where you have people, you have problems, of mm-hmm. course, right. and there, it's gonna get messy. But I think we need to have more of a heart of love to be able to help them. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's like instead of just pushing them away and being like, ah, I don't want to deal with that. Or, mm-hmm. you know, let's just not move in the gifts because that could get into weird things or uh, expose weird things in people. Then that's not truly loving. So yeah. that's that's what I got. I got convicted mm-hmm. like maybe I'm not truly loving these people yeah. by putting the the butt in there. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Like how often, how often do you guys like, and I would imagine not often, but how often would you say that you have to like have an actual meeting and set a person in your office and tell them they have to stop teaching this because their teaching is like too far. Like mm-hmm. when was the last time you had to do that? Yeah. Not, not like years ago. <laughs> yeah. Months been, ago. I haven't had to do that. Like, He's like ever. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. So, but the thing is, is it's like you have a faithful teaching from the pulpit. Mm hmm. And then, and then when people go outside of that, you've actually got systems in place. You've, yeah. you've created a culture mm-hmm. where you get to teach and you've got home groups and Bible studies and Sunday mm-hmm. schools and all that stuff going on in the yeah. church, but you've created a system so that when someone gets outside of that line, you can mm-hmm. address it before it gets too way out of hand. Yeah. yeah. My buddies that do prophecy every week, Sam Storms Church, Wellspring Church, you know, Reclamation up in Denver, mm-hmm. these guys... They, they've created a culture of prophecy. They don't have to pick up messes mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. In the same way, you don't have to pick up messes for teaching all yeah, the time. Yeah. It's because, I mean, 
Certainly, it's possible if you've got some just janky preaching on Sunday that you're going to have a whole bunch of wacky guys coming in and like teaching all kinds of random stuff that's like shameful. Mm -hmm. You know, it's totally possible. It's happened in tons of churches. Mm -hmm. But if you're faithfully creating systems and thoughtful systems that keep people on track, you're able to communicate what the essentials are and how to practice things, you know, Mm -hmm. then when you do prophecy, it's the same. Mm-hmm. You yeah. have to create the system, create the culture. Yeah. Um, I was what telling... I've seen is like when you correct someone, usually they're like, oh, yeah, I, I didn't mean it that way. Sure. I agree with what you're saying. Like I show them scripture, but yeah. it's not ever this big, crazy thing usually. Right. So yeah. In prophecy, it can be the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Someone gets up and they prophesy and they use a great example. You know, um, they, they, they actually, and some people would say, you can't do this. Like this doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. I think it happens. But they're like, I just, I see this person and like mm-hmm. in my heart, there's like a Jezebel spirit or like they're like sexual immorality or whatever, you know, like they, they have this conviction, right? Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, what would be the wrong way to deliver that? Stand up on the Lord's day, point at them and scream, yeah. you spirit of <laughs> gay or whatever, you know, like it would just yeah. be not an appropriate thing to do at that time, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know, what that would look like, because again, we're doing First Corinthians 13, we're trying to let the gifts flow through a place of love Mm -hmm. as you confront that person in love and be like, Hey man, I've been praying for you this week and my heart's just been really like led, led, you know, are you wrestling with this? Like, and this could be out of nowhere, but, and that that could be an opportunity for them to confess and like, Oh great. You know, Mm -hmm. but let's say, let's say they do on the Lord's day. Mm -hmm. How do you talk to that person? How do you engage that person? Mm -hmm. The same way that you would from a teacher on the pulpit who got it wrong. You pull them aside and be like, Hey man, I don't want to condemn you. Um, I don't really want to beat you up. But you're going to have to apologize for that sermon you just preached. Mm. Like, mm. I love you. I really you're you're awesome. I think you had a great motive. You were trying to you're trying to be faithful to God, mm-hmm. but you were angry in that sermon. Yeah. Mm. Like you were you started tackling these people like and they're they're people who are wrestling with sin just like you. You got to get back in that pulpit and apologize. You said this wrong, you said that wrong. Mm. And there's a way to do it with a heart of generosity and care and patience. And like, yeah. Yeah. you don't have to do everything in the moment, but you come alongside that person who prophesied in a way that was unbalanced. Be like, Hey, I know this is going to make me uncomfortable, but you exercise this gift without checking it by anyone. And now mm. you have to apologize mm. because that was out of bounds. I love you. And I want you to exercise the gift of prophecy here. Mm. Uh, we're really trying to go after prophecy. We want to pursue this. We want you to pursue this. I want this to be a staple in your life. I really do. Yeah. Um, mm. But for it to be a staple in this church, people have to feel safe with prophecy. Mm-hmm. And what happened just now caused people, they don't feel safe. Mm-hmm. That was, that that embarrassed this person, you know, it, whatever. Like you can, you can unpack that. So yeah. there's a way to pastor people into that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And I think the fear of man plays a big part in that. Like they're like, oh, well, I don't want to, you know, go in, in that them. way because then once people start moving into the gifts, then there might be people who, are just kind of acting like mm-hmm. it and and then you have to correct them yeah. and sometimes people just fear man they just don't like confrontation mm-hmm. and they're just yeah, like i don't want to deal with this with that. yeah that's no. that's been a struggle like confronting people you know and so then it's i think our temptation is to pull back and be like well if we don't do this then we won't we have won't to have confront people yeah. but that's not the right way to look at mm-hmm. it and that's that's a sin, yeah. I think. You know? Yeah, I think so. we haven't struggled with like the, um, with. I mean, we have struggled. I what was it the, but um, pro, open but cautious? cautious. Okay, yeah, that one. That one. Well, I think our thing is that we we just say to make it sound more spiritual. We'll say, well, what we need to do is we just need to on our own time in the prayer closet, pray and seek God, and if it happens, it happens. You know, like kind sure. of like if it. And so, but what I've been convicted of is like. That's like if you're married, I'm not married, but like if you're married, that's like saying, well, if I have time for you, it'll just happen. And it's like, no, sometimes you have to like make time Mm. for what's important for you. And so, I mean, that's, I think our struggle is that we've just said like, which is true. Like when you go about your day and everything, if you have a word or whatever God has you, but so many times if you're in a service and it's like, okay, we have to do this now. And now we have to do this. And then we got to do this. We can't be still at all especially now having two services, that's where it can get scary. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, praise God, like at the, what we've done is like at the end of services, we'll pray for people and there's a lot of ministry there. And I think that's kind of what we're saying is just making time or room or on our Wednesday services are mainly the time where we see like where we can be a lot more open to it, where 
people are able to like just ask for like prayer requests and stuff and then we'll like pray for them mm. or something like, like night, that but night of prayer and worship yeah. next week we're gonna have that yeah yeah yes. where people can come up and pray you know and so and then yeah like you said you have to have these systems in place mm-hmm. because yeah. like during mm-hmm. worship sometimes people have come up and asked pastor craig hey can i share this you know I feel like God's putting True. this on my heart. Mm-hmm. And it's like someone from the church that mm-hmm. we know. Yeah. It's not just like a random person. Yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah, I've had people like come up and they're like, hey, you know, I am uh, I play an instrument, so I want to play for God. I want to play on the worship team. I tell them, well, we want to wait six months. You know, we just kind of put that in place to see to see you involved. You know you, so to, get to yeah. know sure. you. And you can see their hearts. You can see their mm-hmm. motives. Like, mm-hmm they get all mad and and then leave, you know? But then you see the ones who are like, oh, cool. Like, yeah, I understand that. Mm -hmm. Like, and like our drummer, he was like that. He was all cool. And, Mm -hmm. and now he's drumming with us every week. So Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like, yeah, you can see their hearts when you say those things, you know, even if you say, say, even if you're being wrong, it's like, Hey, you shouldn't put a date on that. You shouldn't put six months. Like that's wrong or something. But hopefully they have a humble heart to be like yeah well i understand where you're mm-hmm. coming from like it's not a law in the bible that you have to have six months or anything True. like that mm-hmm. but it's just you know it's they see your heart behind it so yeah, yeah and i think that you you create on ramps for your church i think one of the great mm-hmm. things that we did um, at our church is i would do transition and people would come and share a word with me or whatever mm-hmm. and every time i take the, the pulpit if i shared a word yeah uh, for the transition i'd say hey um, you know, as we were praying, as we were doing worship, or maybe this week, you know, we mm-hmm. were praying, Jeff got this word, and he's going to share this word with you guys. I just want you to know, we believe in prophecy here. Mm-hmm. If you're unfamiliar with that, well, what I'm saying is, we're going to listen to this word, we're going to weigh this word, we're going to pray about it, yeah. and if it's wrong, you know, we'll, we'll address that, we'll fix it, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but we don't think that this is solo scripture. We don't think this is God's word, right? This is God's capital W word, you know, mm-hmm. infallible word. Yeah. And Jeff is going to come up and share with us. Now, if you're out there and you feel like, man, the Lord's been leading you to say something, like, man, there's there's a, a thought this week that's been really burdening on your heart or maybe in the midst of worship, and you would like to share that, you can always come up here and share that with us. So what I'm doing is I'm telling them what prophecy is. We're about to do it, but I'm also giving them an on-ramp on where and how to do it in a local service mm-hmm. yeah. so that, that they don't just jo- – because honestly – you'll actually create a culture when like when people come in that they haven't seen before mm-hmm. and they get up and they start prophesying people in the pew next to them will be oh, like, oh no, sh- no, no. you know hop down like they won't let you do that here mm-hmm. like they're trying to mm-hmm. save the person's face yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. we ha- we've got rules here you know like yeah, yeah we're charismatic with rules like that's yeah. a thing uh yeah, yeah so you, you can create those cultures for sure mm-hmm. yeah and then with prophecy um there is a a new christian and they just didn't understand prophecy so how would you explain that because some people are like, hey, you know, there's no more prophets. Like, right. the Bible's, you know, done. Like, it's closed, you know? Mm-hmm. So what, how would you explain prophecy to someone like that? So so we have authority in the... in the So the Bible describes authorities that have different measures, mm-hmm. okay? So we are, we are to follow the new covenant, the commandments of Jesus, uh, as infallible, uh, authoritative, binding on the conscience for all people everywhere, right? Uh, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 14, those who who hear what I'm saying that are, mm-hmm. that think they're spiritual, let them know that the words that I'm speaking are the words of God. Mm-hmm. And in that same chapter, he says, there's going to be prophecy. I want you to judge it. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, my word, not judgeable, right? <laughs> like this is God's word, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's prophecy that takes place where God speaks, you know, in mere human words, we can uh, at times misinterpret those words, yeah. miscommunicate those words, mm-hmm have hot Cheetos the night before <laughs> and like, you know, it, that's a, that mm-hmm. a pizza word or whatever, just wrong. You know, yeah. uh, it wasn't from God and there's just no reason. Like you didn't just get part of it, right? You just, you're just wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a thing, right? Mm-hmm. And we own that. It's not a problem. So when someone asked me, what is prophecy? I'd say prophecy is the leading of the spirit trying to communicate something in mere human words that the human couldn't understand otherwise, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That couldn't have known, yeah. right? So, um, you know, Hey, you know, have you have, are you having a hard time uh, with your mother-in-law? I feel like God wants just to give you strength or whatever, and the person breaks down and cries, and mm-hmm. I've got unforgiveness or whatever. Like that'd be prophecy, and that would be a healthy way of exercising prophecy. Um, with uh, with that, some people get really upset. Like you said, there's no more prophecy today. I would just say, like in the first century, women and children are allowed to prophesy. Mm-hmm. 
And they'll say that Ephesians chapter 2, the prophets and apostles lay this infallible foundation for the church forever. I'm like, wait a second. Mm -hmm. So women can't teach the Bible Mm -hmm. in their local church, but women and children can lay the infallible foundation for all people everywhere for all time. (laughs) Like they're they're allowed to prophesy infallibly, but they can't teach. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul says, let everyone be... Uh, that, that they earnestly desire prophecy, uh, uh, earnestly desire spiritual gifts, especially you prophesy. Mm-hmm. But later on in the other gospel or the other gospels, the other the other epistles, we see, um, you know, not let let not many of you be teachers. Mm-hmm. Well, wait a second, you want everyone to desire prophecy, but not everyone should teach. D- doesn't prophecy seem like it's more important, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. m- prophecy would be more dangerous if you got that wrong, yeah. right? And yet there's a stricter judgment for teachers right mm-hmm. that's an odd thing that he wants everyone to prophesy but not everyone should teach yeah. it seems as if prophecy has a different level of authority mm-hmm. than the apostolic word that we have mm-hmm. in scripture mm-hmm. so uh, we see this with nature in uh, romans we see that nature bears witness and mm-hmm. actually condemns us nature is an authority mm-hmm. right we see the government the government is an authority mm-hmm. right but those things are subordinate to the scriptures yeah right so so again god's word is supreme and authoritative binding on the conscience for all people everywhere prophecy is something that we weigh and judge to see if that's god yeah. and we wait and we discern and it's just a different kind of process mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um but it can be edifying encouraging yeah. builds you up yeah mm-hmm. and just to be able to be humble and teachable that's the main thing my dad says we need to be fat faithful available and teachable so a lot of people are faithful they're available but they're not really teachable like i struggle with that but because the bible says discipline doesn't feel good in the moment but in the end it produces a harvest of righteousness and i felt that like in the moment i'm like why are you guys correcting me i just don't want to do it at all like i've Mm. kind of been like a paralyzed perfectionist like if i can't do it perfectly I don't even want to do it. Yeah, and we've so, got to change our language on correcting prophets then. Mm-hmm. We've got to come alongside and care yeah. and help yeah. them. Yeah. Not We're not correcting them. Most yeah. people don't need oh, the right true. foot of fellowship. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Most people just need like, hey, that's you could have done fair. this a little bit different. Mm-hmm. You know? And asking, like, I love how you said it, like, they need to probably be ministered to. Like, yeah. if someone came up mm-hmm. screaming and yelling, you can't just be like, just get them out of the building. There should be someone possibly who's like we should minister to this yeah. lady or something whatever's going on and mm. not be afraid of that and so i think it's just like you said just pray for the heart of jesus like what he had it's just he had compassion yeah. that doesn't mean that you're going to be ministering to everyone everywhere you go but that he'll highlight those people and you're just and i've seen that in my own life where i just start like i look at someone and i'm just like overwhelmed with just like love for them Mm -hmm. and i obviously it's not me because i'm a very selfish person and i just love myself and i can be selfish so it just that's when i see like and then just ask say like holy spirit what do you want me to do what do you want me to say and then obviously if you get it wrong or something isn't accurate or whatever and they're like no that wasn't for me you can humble yourself and it's totally fine Mm -hmm. because that's happened to me before and my dad he has sorry but and then later on they're like actually that was you know i just didn't say it so we can't like completely be because like for me i think that's where i just all of us we're so prideful we don't want any discipline we don't want Mm -hmm. any correction obviously we have to correct in love and that's the whole point but let's just say even if like your worst enemy was like hey you should have done that like you can even take good things from your enemies and what they're saying i mean we got to be careful with that but just in that's my encouragement is just like to stay humble and like True. walk humbly with the lord and just say god i'm your vessel like if you're going to use anyone anyone in authority to say hey that was a little off that's the only time i feel like someone when you can discern because i that's something i'll ask you tonight i know we're over time but just like how to train up people because sure. you know like having those people you're around so what i do is after we pray um on sunday if we for people i have two women that are with me that i'm training them and watching how they do things and yeah. stuff so that then when i'm like hey i think you guys like there's nothing really wacky and i've talked with them i've had lunch with them met with them then they can start doing that and have their own little group where they can pray for people so mm-hmm. it's like mm. that time of ministry but also the whole point of it is we're supposed to be making disciples so that's right that's yeah. the way to do it but yeah can you, you i know that you said we're else? closing but oh, um fine. Yeah, can you explain, like, or just unpack, like, why it's important to move in the gifts and, and kind of how that goes along with the church? Like, it's not, we're not supposed to just be solo Christians just trying to yeah. pull away, but 
it's it's kind of hard to move in the gifts if you don't have a church. So can you kind of talk about the importance of that? And why the local that? church is important? Because you always talk about yeah. that, not oh, just man. the local church is is God's plan for the world, man. So it's they uh, yeah. So it's like I want to put out fires, so I'm gonna go grab my squirt gun, <laughs> you know, instead of enlisting into like the fire department yeah. like going through the training and getting the work and like yeah. working with a group of guys mm-hmm. having the right equipment having the right materials to like put out a fire yeah it's like no 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 i'm good <laughs> like, I'm super soaker. you know like it's just a bad idea you know like and that's that's what we do in, in the church is we we have this idea that like um you know you're literally saying i am a, a, a finger or i'm a pinky toe mm-hmm. and you're an eye and i don't need you mm-hmm. I'm going to yep. do this on my own. Mm-hmm. There's literally the Bible verse about that. Like, I didn't just make that up. Yeah. Like, that's a Bible yep. verse. <laughs> you know, First Corinthians, <laughs> right? So we, we, we're members of one body, right? Mm-hmm. And then according to Ephesians chapter 4, um, he gives these gifts. He In that Ephesians 4, it mentions apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. We all mm-hmm. reach the fullness, right? So the idea is, like, to mature us into the expressed image and the maturity of the stature of Christ. Like, yeah. our, our goal is to be built up. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and not that any one of us is going to be the fullness of Christ. I mean, you know, but, but that to collectively we express that. So I mentioned this yeah. in the, in the, the service that um, it's better that I go. Right. Mm-hmm. Because you're going to do greater works. Mm-hmm. Well, the question could be like, are you going to do greater works or yeah. that are million of us together yeah. going to see more healings than Jesus ever saw in his lifetime? Mm-hmm. Right. I think I think when millions of Christians through hundreds of years, thousands of years now. Right. Like we're we're, we're going on mm-hmm. nearly 2000 years of Christians having the spirit in them mm-hmm. and seeing people get healed. That's way more than Jesus could have ever seen yeah, in his quantity. lifetime. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, yeah, there's going to be more mm-hmm. because he ascended. Right. Mm-hmm. So um, the gifts of the spirit are for the edification of the body. It's mm-hmm. to edify, it's to build us up, to it's encourage us. In prophecy specifically, mm-hmm. is the edification, reproof, correct. No, that, that, that's, that's scripture, Second Second Timothy 3.16. I'm getting it mixed up. Uh, but but it's to, to edify you and build you up. So mm-hmm. again, um, when the gifts are being, like, sick person gets healed. Yeah. That that helps them. Like, why did, why, yeah. why did God use the gift of healing? Because they were sick before and now they're not. Like, I don't have like, a really fancy answer. Yeah. You know, yeah. someone is like, God, help me. I need a sign. And mm-hmm. someone comes and gives them a word that helps mm-hmm. help the direction of their life. Yeah. It's super helpful. Like, like, why would, why would God, you know, um, I don't know. Think of another gift, like word of knowledge or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like all, all these things, they, they help. Yeah. They're, they're good. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 It, it's pretty simple. Yeah. Pretty simple yeah, answer. That's yeah, that's what to I was, glorify God, edify that's the body. Looking for. Yeah. 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 and go to church. And, and people go, are just go to church. watching <laughs> podcasts all, or listening or yeah. watching YouTube all day. Yeah, if, if I had to make a choice to like every single person who watched my podcast, I had the option of saying, "Hey, you can have two options. You can stop watching Remnant Radio for the rest of your life, hmm. or stop going to your church for the rest of your life." You shut off yeah, Remnant Radio. <laughs> I would shut the channel down if that was an option. Like, if if it could get people going back to local church, that what I would that's be that'd be what I'd be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the local church is God's. I mean, Jesus is obviously God's answer, but the established church is God's plan of of pushing back the kingdom of darkness and mm-hmm. using the local body um, to build them up and to preach the gospel and raising mm-hmm. up disciples. Like it's Amen. it's yeah. the pattern. It's all throughout Scripture. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know how else to say Yeah, that. Remnant about, Radio is really good for people, but it's not the church. Like you're That's saying. right. It's like, it's 100%. really good. There's a lot of great information, and yep. it's good for people who want to study more. But yeah, it's, we shouldn't There's just no be church discipline YouTube there. Christians. No. <laughs> There's no sacraments there. Yeah. Um, we might have some teaching on God's Word. No we might talk about theology. Yeah. But yeah, there's no accountability. No, the pre, the, so historically, like the Heidelberg Catechism and other catechisms have said, the church is, is ratified by three primary roles. Administration of sacraments, church discipline, and the preaching and teaching of God's Word. Mm-hmm. If one of those three things isn't happening, you go to a church that's doing communion and baptism and you know, they kind of teach the Bible, but people are living in rampant sin mm. Mm. and the church leadership knows about it, but they ain't going to address it. Mm. Not yeah. a church. That's a social club. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Or the other way around, you're preaching God's word, um, you know, but you're not administering the sacraments. Not mm. a church. Mm. Uh, historically, that's how we've defined what church is. And Remnant Radio is mm. doing one third of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of the times we're facilitating conversations that are biblical in nature, mm-hmm. but aren't exegeting a text, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. Well, we're thankful to have you at our church. We're thankful Thanks for, for all you've me. done Thank you. to, yeah, to spur us. And 
Um, can you share with our listeners where they can find you and yeah. any resources else? anything else you could give them okay yeah uh you can check us out on the remnant radio.com uh youtube spotify itunes google play all the podcasting platforms a uh, great way to connect with us um as far as resources if you're looking to get started in the gifts of the spirit my favorite book is by sam storms it's uh, understanding spiritual gifts a comprehensive guide mm-hmm. and it really covers all of the gifts of the spirit yep. uh it's super helpful it's super rich there's a lot of cessationist arguments that he tackles there's a lot mm-hmm. of like why we believe this and how it functions in our local church it's it's comprehensive one might say yeah. and then uh <laughs> then there's like if you want us to read smaller books like a beginner's guide to prophecy is a good mm-hmm. book uh, if you want something that's really academic on prophecy wayne grudem's got a good one that's that's really good on, on prophecy and then if you are like you are like you're in seminary Okay, if you're in seminary and you want a book on this, D.A. Carson has one called Showing the Spirit. I believe it's, what, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's, an exi- it's a book that's like that thick on three chapters of the Bible, on wow. 12, 13, and 14 of 1 Corinthians. Hmm. I'll be honest, I couldn't get all the way through it. Yeah. It's wow. so academic. I'm like, it, it takes wow. so much time to that's say one thing. That's for you, Mireya. Yeah, okay. There you go. That's, that one's tackling. for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our researcher, she'll research that for us, but... Um, also, everyone can go check out um, in the description below. I'll have the um, sermon? sermon that yep. you had this Sunday mm-hmm. and our cool. 6 p.m. we'll have on. Mm-hmm. And yeah, would you like to pray for us? Yeah, let's do it. Absolutely. Um, Father, thank you so much for man, the opportunity to be here um, to fellowship with your brother and sister in Christ mm-hmm. um, and to serve your people today. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lord, uh, I would be I would be honored beyond belief just to be a slave in your home and mm-hmm. you call me a friend. Um, and you've adopted me as a son. I thank you so much for the opportunity to not work for you, but to work with you um, in this great commission. And I'm so thankful for all the things that you have given us uh, through uh, the veil of your flesh, the, the blood that you've spilled for me. And we look to you as the author and the finisher of our faith. You are God, mm-hmm. and we're just dirt. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we thank you so much for, for, for giving us a place of honor and, and, and allowing us to serve alongside you. Uh, and Father, I thank you for the people who are watching at home. Uh, as, as we've talked about, get plugged into a local church, Amen. pursue the gifts of the Spirit. And I ask that your Spirit would be with them and convict them and lead them and guide them. It could be a difficult time to find a good church, uh, finding a good church that believes in the gifts in a safe way, in a healthy way, that's still biblically serious. Uh, so God, I would ask that you would help guide them and lead them to the place that you would have them. Uh, and man, um, help them get plugged in, yes. get them mm-hmm. in a local church, help them serve in faithfully submitting to the, the overseer who's been, you know, uh, tasked with the oversight of their soul. So, mm. um, you know, thank you again for the opportunity to come and speak today, Lord. And, uh, yeah, we love you. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Joshua. Yeah, thank you. Well, if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you'd like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. And thank you so much to our sponsor, Mission Heating and Cooling. Please make sure to check out their website in the description below. And if you would like to support Calvary Conversations, you can click on the link below and do that. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.